Hello and let's talk about the vaccines for COVID-19. Recently news came of promising results in the test for a vaccine that's being developed by the University of Oxford. According to the BBC, trials involving 1077 people showed the injection led to them making antibodies and T cells that can fight the coronavirus. In fact, in addition to the Oxford vaccines, four other vaccines are entering clinical trials already. This provides some hope in difficult times with cases showing no signs of decreasing, especially in countries such as USA, Brazil and India. So what are the implications of these trials and how long do we have to wait? News clicks Prabir Purkayastha and Dr. Satyajit Rath discuss some of these issues. Satyajit, it could welcome information. We now seem to have at least four vaccines which are going into four phase three trials. Oh, absolutely. Um, it's, it's welcome news. Um, it's not surprising news at all. Um, at this stage, uh, any surprises would have been unpleasant surprises. So I'm glad that uh, there are no surprises in this. All of these have been tested in at least two um, animal models. And uh, what they did in those animal models, they seem to be doing in these small scale human trials. Um, so I think that um, we are on track. Um, all of them have entered phase three clinical trials already. Um, Except the model now, which has yet to start its clinical trial. Well, they, 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 they're doing the paperwork and yes. need to recruit. So, um, and and uh, clinical trials are starting in, what, five different locations across the world. In the UK, in China, in the US, in Brazil, in South Africa. So Also in the United Arab Emirates. Oh, even they have a, they're a center where it is being tested. Yes, they do. The Chinese, one of the Chinese vaccines is being tested there. So, um, so I think that the, these are expected good results, but they are small steps. They are an initial, very small step. What do those these four reports that everybody is talking about, which have come more or less coincidentally together? Uh, what do they tell us? They tell us some definitive evidence and they tell us some indicative information. The definitive evidence is that all four of these vaccines are safe or let me be correct. All four of these vaccine candidates are safe over the short term. Okay. And on a small number. And small numbers. Um, it's noteworthy that two of them are based on um, adenoviral vectors and two of them are based on RNA formulation. No, I think uh, no, there's one virus which the Chinese are doing, which is uh, actually inactivated uh, virus. The current report that we are looking at is the Chinese adenovirus 5 vector based vaccine. That is correct. That is the one inactivated vaccine report has come early. Yes, but that's also entering phase. So in that three. sense, there are in that sense there are five candidates in play. How is it five? I'm just wondering. There is, is one. As to Moderna's is one. RNA, there is uh, BioNTech uh, um, Pfizer's RNA. Okay, Pfizer's one also is the problem. The chimpanzee adenovirus. There is the Chinese adenovirus, and there is the Chinese inactivated virus. In fact, what I'm trying to say is that we are going to see an exhilaratingly large number of these reports coming out in the coming weeks. Because if you look at, for example, if you look at the WHO um, status update document um, on the WHO site about vaccines, the latest is, I think, dated the 20th of July. So it's not that out of date or anything. And in that tab tabulation, there's a fair number of vaccine candidates which are in phase one. Oh, that's very large. So um, those results are going to start coming up in the next few weeks. So we are going to have, it doesn't matter, three, four, five candidates. We are going to see many more in the coming weeks. And I suspect that in all of them, the first result from the human trials are going to say exactly these two things. The but first, I, I'll, uh, let me interrupt you for a minute over here. While the, the, the Chinese two viruses and the AstraZeneca, they seem to have done a sufficiently, uh, for phase two, sufficiently large number, 600 to 1000 or so. 
but the model is a small sample. It's really only about six. Yes, there are uh, significant differences in the numbers, huh. and um, you know, one one could always quibble about about it all. Keep in mind that the Oxford um, chimpanzee adenoviral vaccine report that we have, the actual phase two level data are not from all samples. Okay. In fact, the paper actually specifies correctly that this is a preliminary analysis being reported because all tests have not been as yet complete. Okay. So th this is why I'm saying that the current step has two components. The definitive component, as we said, is that these things seem to be safe when people get injections, safe over the short term, safe in adults, safe in adults of European and healthy adults of European ancestry in the main, except for the Chinese uh, uh, trials. Um, so there are caveats, but this is good that they are safe. The non-definitive indicative component of the evidence is that all of them seem to generate antibody responses in pretty much all vaccine the candidate recipients. All of these antibody responses seem to show virus neutralization capacity. All of these vaccinees, these vaccine recipients, also generate T lymphocyte responses against the cells are activated. Start. Keep in mind that the, the antibody level it can at least be analyzed for, as I said, virus neutralization capacity. The T cell responses at this point have not been and really, properly speaking, cannot be um, examined for their protective contribution. Okay. So we have so definitive evidence about plus for a minute, indicative just, evidence about the immunity. Just, just yeah. to make it clearer to our viewers, the antibody response will be also basically protective. While the T cell at the moment we cannot say how much what will be the protective response. How do you sort of can you elaborate a little on that? So you can measure the antibody response in ways that don't tell you whether that antibody response is likely to be protective or not. Okay. But you can also do so-called virus neutralization tests with the antibodies. And if they show the capacity for virus neutralization, then it's a reasonable um, piece of information that they may be protective. They're okay. likely to be protective. It's not evidence of protection, but it says they're likely to be Exactly similarly, you can test to see whether there are T cell responses, and there are. But at this point, nobody's done even indicative tests to ask whether the T cell responses have any antiviral capacity. Okay. They so, get awake, but we don't know whether they can attack and destroy the virus. That's what it really means. Or the cells which get infected and therefore take out the to be fair, those are much harder tests to do. Oh. The antibody, the virus neutralization tests for antibodies are hard enough to do, oh. which is why the results between the four pap papers are uh, uh, for, 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 for fine readers, the results are a mess. But broadly, they still say this. So we know now there is antibody response. We know now there is T cell response. We know that the antibodies may, may be able to neutralize the virus in case of an infection, but we do not know whether the T cell response will be able to do so or not, at least definitely. So that's where we are at the moment. And that's why, of course, we need larger scale trials to test it through the fire, so to say, of the actual large scale exposure to infection, and yes. as well to see whether there are any possible side effects, which can also be harmful. Absolutely. So there are additional nuances to this, 
especially when you consider all four reports that are still not adding the fifth one which is also entering clinical trials because we don't seem to have a, a report about it or at least not recently so it, the interesting thing is that the adenoviral vaccines as well as the rna vaccines on the one hand they are safe on the other hand, they are pretty damned painful. They are pretty damn painful. If you look at the data, mm. they, um, the, the amount of redness, swelling, local tenderness, a little bit of fever, all of this is, is quite notable. So uh, for, for, for people of um, sufficiently advanced age, such as you and me, it is reminiscent of the vaccines that we used to take when we were children, where the arm would swell and you'd feel uh, horrible and miserable for a day or two and so on and so forth. Now, is this a huge problem for these vaccines? On the one hand, no, in the sense that these are transient effects, they'll pass, and if the vaccines work, it's well worth it. But in this day and age of social media mediated amplification of anti science, irrational anti vaxxer movements, um, this is something to be considered about how successful implementation and acceptability of these vaccines will be. Well, that hopefully will be more in the United States, but for some strange reason, there is a strong body of people who do not believe in science, believe in even in flat earth. By the way, their numbers are also growing. And of course, the anti-vaxxer. But coming to the question of ill effects, possible ill effects, the modern report seems to indicate that a few more, uh, shall we say, beyond pain, effects have also been observed is that correct well you know they've they've reported one severe effect i think um i frankly i'm not inclined at this point to to be judgmental about it so it could be if we have a much larger sample we so, find that this is an so I think that uh, the uh, the data safety data and safety management boards have all uh, correctly uh, generally supported movement forward into phase three, and in the phase three we will see what the results look like. Keep in mind that the uh, numbers in terms of the magnitude of immune responses of the Moderna uh, vaccine seem to be larger than that, for example, of the Oxford vaccine. Now that brings up um, the second of my particular bees in the bonnet about nuances, because I think that um, our, our uh, listeners should be cautious about the interpretations of these numbers. These are not absolute numbers of universal uh, meaningfulness. So in a sense, different tests with different levels of sensitivity would give different numbers. And since these are very different centers doing their own tests, depending on the local configuration of the test, the numbers would look quite different. In fact, if you look at the Oxford vaccine reporting paper, they've done three different virus neutralization tests. And the numbers in the three virus neutralization tests are completely different from each other. So I think that it's important to uh, keep in mind that uh, these absolute numbers may not mean anything other than technical differences. Yes, I guess also the 
ultimate test will be do they protect us or they don't absolutely and the numbers are only very rough indicators and they don't really tell us where it will protect and where it will not plus what you are saying the calibration of the numbers itself is a problematic issue because they're not calibrated to common quote unquote viral utilization standard so these are the caveats we have to take into account but the bigger caveat we don't know how long the if there is protection how long the protection will last absolutely so that's other other big if you in this game that if if some of the reports are true it is possible that we might need to have vaccines at the six months and a year and in two years if we are lucky our next story is about the tourism sector in kashmir affected by multiple lockdowns and a brutal communications shutdown for almost a year those employed in the sector are facing all kinds of issues which have been compounded by the uncertainty in government policy as we approach the first anniversary abrogation of sections of article 370 we look at the impact on the sector बात हुई थी एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन से तो थोड़ा थोड़ा ठीक होने लगा था हमें भी नज़र आ रहा था कि लॉकडाउन ईज हो गया था तो लोगों की इंटरनल मूवमेंट स्टार्ट हो गई थी तो उसी में गवर्नमेंट ने एक इनिशिएटिव लिया था कि रिवाइवल कैसे करेंगे हम इसमें हमारे दो मसले थे सर्वाइवल और रिवाइवल का तो अब सर्वाइवल के साथ तो हम उनके साथ बात थी कि कोई ग्रांट इन पैकेज या कुछ ऐसा होना चाहिए सेंट्रल स्टेट की लेवल पर तो वो बात उसके साथ साथ चल रही थी तो अब रिवाइल रिवाइवल का मसला आया था तो फिर हमारी सेक्टर साहब से भी बात हुई कि गाइडलाइंस क्या होनी चाहिए तो थोड़ा हमारी भी मैसेज बाहर गई अपने जो हमारे प्रिंसिपल एजेंट्स हैं उन तो ये बात पहुंची थी वहाँ से भी हमें थोड़ा पॉजिटिव सपोर्ट मिला था तो उसमें गाइडलाइंस था वही कोविड का कैसे हुई टेस्ट कैसे करना चाहिए तो वो जो थी नीटिंग वो हमने की थी मगर अनफॉर्चुनेटली जो फिर से लॉकडाउन हो गया तो ये न्यूज़ पूरे नेशन में फैल गई तो आजकल तो नेट है सबके पास तो इस हालत में हम किसी को बुला सकते हैं ना कोई आने के लिए तैयार होगा मेरे को लगता है ये सब फ्यूटाइल है एज ऑफ नाउ तो जब तो पूरा ग्राउंड या ग्राउंड लेवल यहाँ पे सही नहीं होगी पूरे जो लॉकडाउन का मसला है पर एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन को भी सोचना चाहिए कि हम कैसे ये रोड मैप बनाए कि टूरिस्ट को यहाँ लाना ईजी नहीं होता है या जो भी इकनॉमिकल एक्टिविटीज़ पूरी ठप पड़ी हुई है तो उनके लिए भी उनको सोचना चाहिए कि कैसे एक रोड मैप के तहत हम चले कोविड के साथ तो अब रहना ही रहना है ये पता नहीं मतलब सालों रहना पड़े महीनों रहना अल्लाह बेहतर जानता है जब तक तो कोई इसकी कोई मेडिसिन नहीं निकले कोई ऐसी ट्रीटमेंट नहीं निकले तो तब तक या तो हमें फिर पूरा ही एक मैं फिर भी बोल रहा हूँ कि रोड मैप ये होना चाहिए तो हमें पूरा ठप करके रहना चाहिए बिल्कुल जो इकनॉमिकल एक्टिविटीज़ हैं जो भी कोई एक्टिविटी है रिगार्डिंग हमारे रोज़ी रोटी के बारे में तो या तो हमें वो बिल्कुल पता होना चाहिए कि हमें कैसे चलना है नहीं तो ये भी हमारे यहाँ एक फिर वो तजुर्ज रहता है कि आज खुल जाएगा कल बंद हो जाएगा इट्स नॉट ईजी लेकिन सबसे बड़ी प्रॉब्लम है जब जब से यह नया लॉकडाउन थ्री इम्प्रोज हो गया हमारे ऊपर तो पहले हमको अपने आप को बचाना है तो टूरिस्ट के लिए हम क्या करेंगे तो उनको पता नहीं है आवाज बाहर चली गई कि तीन इक्कीस दिन का और लॉकडाउन है कश्मीर में तो वो सभी को ये सोचेगा कि वहां पर जब उनके लिए लॉकडाउन तो मैं वहां घूमने के लिए क्या करने एस ओ पी करना चाहिए पहले वो हमारे पास हमारे साथ वो फैसिलिटीज़ क्रिएट करनी चाहिए और खासकर श्रीनगर में जो भी अभी क्वारंटाइन सेंटर है वो श्रीनगर में ही है चाहे होटल है चाहे गेस्ट हाउस है जो इसमें ट्रांसपोर्ट वाबस्ता लोग हैं तो वही उनको एक जगह से दूसरी जगह ले जाते हैं पहले तो इसको फ्री करो उससे अभी लॉकडाउन किया है एक एरिया तो खुला है दूसरा इलाका बंद है एक जगह से प्राइवेट गाड़ियाँ चलती है तो दूसरी तरह से ट्रांसपोर्ट चलता है अब पता नहीं है ये लॉकडाउन है बंद है या कुछ और है हम कब कन्फ्यूज है इसमें हम हमें करना क्या चाहिए और करना क्या होगा गवर्नमेंट को कोई बात क्लियर नहीं आ रही है यहाँ का जो टूरिज़म डिपार्टमेंट है वो भी बहुत वार फुटिंग पे ये कोशिश करा कि यहाँ पे टूरिज़म आ जाए और अगर यहाँ पे टूरिज़म आ जाए तो वो एक अच्छी पहल होगी क्योंकि जितने भी यहाँ पे शोब सयाद से जुड़े हुए हैं आज की आज की इस तारीख में सब इस वक्त बेहाली की जिंदगी बसर कर रहे हैं Thank <laughs> you.